everyone. Welcome to Mission to Inspire. My name is Shola. As you know, your guest is um, Calvin Cassidy. He's a Christian, he's an author, and he has joined us today. Um, I'm going to leave it to him to introduce himself properly, and we'll go from there. Hi, Calvin. How are you? Welcome to our show. I'm go I'm doing good. Where 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 are you at today? <laughs> where are you coming from? <laughs> I'm actually in um United Kingdom. Very good. I feel honored now. <laughs> well, my name is Calvin Cassidy. Yeah. Um I was my main my main profession was education. Uh, I was an educator in all different areas from kindergarten up to, uh, to college. Uh, and I was in the profession for 40 years, wow. but in the beginning of the beginning of my, uh, um, service, uh, yeah. I served as a Christian minister, uh, youth Christian minister for yeah. 11 years at a, at a church in Joplin, Missouri. So we're coming, I'm coming to you from Southwest Missouri in, in the United States. Um, during that time, I also, in the last few years, uh, since I retired, I worked on a Native American Indian tribe reservation uh, as a member of the tribal council. And I did that for eight years. And then, uh, I, I, I published a book, the book's called Bridging the Gap, A Spiritual Journey to Heaven and Back. And that, uh, is what my main subjects had been when we when we've been doing these podcasts and that was a uh, uh, a Christian autobiography of a time whenever uh through a near-death experience I experienced had an experience with God and with the crossing over and into heaven and then coming back and that sounds pretty remarkable in itself but the most remark remarkable part of the book is actually what happened after that? Because with that kind of uh, a background, um, I felt very empowered to to do Christian work, and uh, and uh, I feel like to a degree I've been very successful. Um, but that's basically the rundown. I, I live in Southwest Missouri, and uh, I'm married, and and I have two daughters who, believe it or not, are both educators and um that's about that's about sums me up <laughs> oh my god thank you so much for introducing yourself there um i know you've said quite a bit about yourself but can you summarize um your life's mission and message in just a few words or a single phrase what will it be and why well um, my life's mission is service to God. Uh, that is a result of our our uh, mystical meeting following a, a car crash, and uh, and I was taken away and returned. And with a, my that, my mission is to uh, being you know being empowered to work with people, and for the first thirty years of my life. Most of those people that I work closely with were educators and children, mostly children. Right. Okay. Mostly children. That was up until I retired, uh, and that's been about 20 years ago. And then I uh, focused an interest on uh, just Christian, Christian ministry in general. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm beginning to work with the kids at our church again. Uh, we're getting a new pastor, and I'm kind of on the the team to upgrade our Christian education. Um, so that's where I stand right now. Right. Okay. Thank you so much for that. You've actually phrased it up. You've summarized everything, your mission. And, <laughs> and we're so happy to have you on our show today. What actually inspired you to transit? from a career in education, yeah, to becoming a Christian author and journalist? Well, 
the you know the material was yeah hours and hours of notes and 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 uh, journal entries about things that had happened and uh, as i closed you know closed my teaching career yes um it was just there i mean basically it was just rephrasing everything setting it up um I guess reminder of uh, you know the goodness that can happen from yeah. people that, that that will get out there and take the chance and and um, uh, I mean I look back and I think you know uh, when when we when, when I had my heavenly experience we chatted about things and of course love and faith and those kind of things were were foremost important. Uh, and back in the 70s and the 80s, mm -hmm. in the public schools, you had a lot more freedom to, to ex you know, express your thoughts. And, uh, uh, but, you know, children then, children now, mm -hmm. need somebody to believe in. Uh, and that's kind of, that was kind of my, that I was kind of implanted in the public schools to, uh, for for students that you know might be troubled or just students that were having problems at home uh even back in the 70s and 80s we had parents that were alcoholics or even even borderlining on drug addicts um we had uh, divorces and all kinds of things that caused kids uh to need somebody to to just see them through and uh i seem to have a knack after having that heavenly experience yeah. to locate those people. Uh, I mean, I think that was, I think God has put that, has given me that um, potential to go into a room and, and see people that, that need help. Mm -hmm. And uh, that to me in the beginning, you know, I didn't think about it. It just happened. That's whenever I started to uh, review uh, yeah. later in life and i'm thinking you know that was no accident no. Uh, it seems it seemed casual you know and it just happened but uh um uh, in retrospect i'm sure that was that was part of the plan because even today uh and maybe more so today in the last few years since covid and and uh since the world started started up again uh that recognition is is coming back and I see people and I, and I want to, you know, I want to find out about what's going on in their life and, and offer solutions and offer help. Uh, but this whole idea of, you know, just, just going into a room and, and, and going to, you know, going to church on Sunday and, uh, and, uh, there, you know, somebody will just stand out. I, they, and when, you know, no words spoken. You just can, you can just feel it. I can feel God pointing me in that direction and to work in that particular area. And uh, like I said, just lately, uh, I've started, I've had an opportunity to, to go back and uh, and uh, retweak the the education part of our, our church. And I, I feel very, very honored to be able to do that and, and be on a team to try to get things ready for, for a new priest. And... Um, so, I mean, I just, my most successful time is when I just live from minute to minute. <laughs> I just say, what's going to, you know, what do I, you know, I get up in the morning and I say, God, my life's in your hands. Uh, guide me. And, and, and sometimes I get off the path and had to be dragged back. <laughs> As a general rule, uh, I, it's like in the morning I have a mission and I'm really not sure what it is until until it happens. Yeah. But I'm always prepared. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. So um where can we purchase your book? What's the title again? Uh Bridging the Gap, a spiritual journey to heaven and back. You can get it on Amazon, you can get it on most um uh, online booksellers. Right. Thank you so much for that information. So I know you were a youth minister prior to now and also a tribal leader. Um, yes. 
So how did you incorporate your diverse experiences into your writing and speaking at engagements and into your ministry? Well, again, uh, most of most of my success I give to God because he's the one that sets he's the one that took me and he's the one that set me up and he's the one that uh is always there to help me put things together um and and, it's, and that's and that's is you know putting things together is what it's all about uh, uh and it, I I mean I honestly say even today sometimes I get especially during COVID, I would get these messages that you just got to do this. You got to talk to this person. You yeah. just got to do it. And so I'd head off and I wasn't sure what I was supposed to do. But by the time I got there, it was all clear. And, you know, God had put those words in my mouth. He'd given me the, the proper uh, empathy and sympathy to deal with these situations. And, uh, when you, you know, in that over 50 years, yeah, you become pretty confident, and sometimes you forget and you say, Oh, you know, surely there's something that can be done for that person, yeah. and then you uh, and then you uh, pray about it, and all of a sudden, you know, you're there for them, or you begin to see things in their lives change, awesome. and uh, that's very exciting to me. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my goodness, wow. That is a very, very exciting journey. I mean, leaving everything to God, allowing God to guide us through our daily living without any judgment is a very hard thing to do. Um, yes. <laughs> <laughs> it is very hard. And I, and you know, sometimes, sometimes when you're trying so much because you think you've got the right idea, and it just keeps failing and you just keep hitting that wall until you finally figure out uh I'm going the wrong way. You need to back it up. You need to, you know, you need to listen a little harder and try something else. And that's the hard part because you know, living every day for for Jesus and God is a very easy thing to say. And as long as you're on that right path, it is I'm not saying it's easy, but because they all have difficult some that degree of difficulty, but when you get off that path, mm -hmm. it's hard for us as human beings to say, "I don't think I'm going the right way." You know, they talk about men forget to ask for directions. Well, I think we all forget to ask for directions when things go sideways, and you know, and sometimes it gets to the point where you think, "Well, I'm just going to give up because I can't figure this out." And the whole key to that is you know there's somebody that there that's going to help you figure it out you just got to back it up and pay a little closer attention to what's going on and sometimes the reason we don't do what god wants us to do yeah. is because we don't want to do what god wants us to do Very and true. and that's you know that's just the whole truth of the matter when you get in that when you get in that wrestling mess with god's will uh, and unless you're willing to bend, you're going to find yourself, you know, in a lot of hurt and a lot of unnecessary uh, pain and misery and and depression. Um, uh, so, yeah, it's very true. You know, it's very true because um, so as the Bible says, it says that God's way is not our way. So in most cases, we see things from a different perspective. God sees from a bigger and a larger perspective so yes you're very true you're very true but then in your bio you mentioned god's calling for you to spread his message and hope to a faith staffed world how did you navigate the complexities of faith um in today's society especially you mean yeah well this society and this particular culture is very very difficult. There's 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 so many. Um, well, it's just a mess. <laughs> the world we live in today is just a mess, and uh, and and it, 
I feel like as Christians, we're struggling uh, to to stay in the game. And I know that sounds sounds rough, but I think that's true. I, I think you know uh, that it's just getting it's getting harder and harder yeah. to get people to pay attention to you, mm-hmm. get people to pay attention to to uh, God and the, and the Holy Spirit, and uh, and it's it's hard if you can get them to. Uh, things can turn around real quick, but you know, uh, you know, the the news tells us that Christianity is on the decline. I think that's partly because, uh, you know, I've always thought in working with with people, there are three kinds of Christians. There's the kind of Christian that knows God, mm-hmm. and there's the kind of Christian that hears God, hears God's word. But then the kind of Christian you need is the kind of Christian that shares God. And uh, uh, so, but I think, you know, uh, in the earlier two, I think, you know, I think there's a lot more people that are Christian that are reporting they're Christian. I don't know where they're getting their information. I know churches are on the decline. Ours, fortunately, the church I go to is not on the decline. It is one of the few churches uh, in our denomination that have increased membership in the last year. So I feel fortunate to be to be a part of that, but I know a part of that is that we've become more prayerful, and as a congregation, we're paying closer attention to what God wants, and we're sacrificing and some of what we think we need to do, mm-hmm. uh, uh, and and that's a re- it's a remarkable thing to be a part of that kind of a Christian community, mm-hmm. and I think if that's that's the way we're going to increase Christianity is to build up our, you know, build up our local Christian communities yeah. and and get to the point where we can not only share with our congregation and our denomination, but we can all share with each other. And, uh, uh, and you know, and then we're in a place where we can can, can make some social change. Mm-hmm. We, we, we've got to stop arguing about what what we think is right and what we think is wrong we've got a we've got a guidebook and it's called the bible and if you read the bible it it, it says that you leave judgment you leave judgment to god because he's the only one that's perfectly capable of making judgments and we've gotten i mean you know what I'm trying to say. The government and and uh, society has gotten involved in things that they should just stay out of. Uh, you know, they, they, they when people make decisions for themselves, they're making decisions for themselves, and and they have the only one they really have to answer to is God. But right now, there's so many rules and regulations that somebody's put in to make themselves look good. Or I, I mean I don't know. <laughs> when you ask that question, I always go to go to pieces because that is it, there's just no right there's no real right answer, yeah. and the right answer has been so uh, concealed or or uh, uh, you know or camouflaged with all this this uh, talk of you know. Yeah, ask kids because one of the things that I'm working with in trying to get our new Christian education team together is where does right and wrong fit into it? I mean, where do you teach that? Where do you teach about sin? Where do you teach about forgiveness? I mean, uh, I've gone to places and looked at what they're offering for Christian education, and they've all got nice glowing packages, mm-hmm. but they don't get down and attack the problem. Yes. Uh, when I was growing up, I knew what was right and what was wrong. I'm not telling you that I was perfect in any way because I wasn't. But I did know the difference between right and wrong. And I did know the difference. I, I mean, I understood what sin was. And uh, I understood that, you know, that, that God still loves you. And uh, I think that's another key to love is something that has gotten... Um, cloudy <laughs> you know uh, i had to think a minute for that but but you know love christian love and the kind of love you hear so much about 
in today's music on on the screen and movies and and television is not the kind of love necessarily uh, that God uh, that God teaches. And uh, uh, I look back to when I was like I said when I was teaching school, uh, it was not uncommon uh, to you know to say well you know you've got to have faith you know you've got to believe and and maybe even you could even kind of cross that line because the line really wasn't there the line didn't get there until that was legislated legislated by people that was trying to make one group happy and they didn't care and so that's where you know our culture is is uh is in a mess and society is in a mess because we've let people uh, lead us that don't have that aren't being led they're being uh, you know they're being led but they're not being led by god they're being led by uh other people in some cases corrupt people or corrupt organizations mm-hmm. and uh, uh we don't have much of a check uh a check or balance over that anymore because like i said uh, christianity and love is kind of concealed and people are looking at all the distractions and are you know they're they're mm-hmm. missing the point yeah. uh, uh, mm-hmm. after covid uh, you know a lot of people really i mean that challenged their belief system beyond uh, it, you know you could nothing had happened to a lot of people that traumatic in their entire life mm-hmm. especially families that lost mm-hmm. loved ones uh, or lost friends, mm. and uh, those people are having a hard time healing. And uh, you, you have to be real careful because uh, their their belief was really, really, really challenged. And whenever I meet people like that, and they want to, they start in. I said, "Well, now, okay, you can do whatever you want, but do not blame God. No. You can't do that." You've got to, you've got to, that's good. That's the source of your, of your uh, healing. And uh, they won't argue with you, but some of them will not give up on their, (laughs) God has dealt them a bad hand, but I'm not arguing with that because I don't, I mean, I lost people in COVID that I was friends with, uh, that I worked with. It was very, very, very difficult, but it's not as difficult for me because I know that they're in a better place. And I know that. And that's one thing, you know, God, God through the Bible gives us lots and lots of opportunities to read about our future. Uh, You have, you know, but, but to have God take you there and say, now this is a real deal and you know about it. And, you know, and part of your mission is going to be, Take this enthusiasm that we've generated here in this in this brief visit and go back and use it to help those that need help. And uh, and the other part of the thing that so often doesn't that isn't said is that if you are a Christian, it is okay to say, I need help. Yeah. I need help. Yeah. Uh our house was 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 blown away in a tornado. And uh and uh I, I kidded my wife because we just retired and uh and I, I told her uh, we were staying with friends that night of the of the of the storm mm-hmm. and uh we were and we were pretty messed up too. I mean there was there was a little doubt there. Yeah. But I told her, I said, you know, I said, now we know to, now we know what it feels like to be unemployed and homeless <laughs> and i said and we don't have anything to worry about everything's going to work out fine uh, but it is hard to i mean we feel like it's difficult to yeah. to call our neighbors and our friends and say i need help mm-hmm. but when we got to our house the day after the tornado there were people there that i didn't even know there were people there that didn't even live in our town mm-hmm. that had came to help because they just heard on the news uh, so that's another testimony of, of, of Christian love uh, that a lot of times we spend our time giving it, but sometimes we get so so busy and wrapped up in life that when we need it, we forget 
that it's there for us, just like it was there for uh, the people that you that you gave your time to. Yeah, sure. sure. Thank you so much for that. Thank you so much. Um, I know you've shared some testimony already, but what can you share or what is, um, I, I don't know if you had an experience or can you just share an experience that solidify your commitment to, to serving God and share his message with others? Also, what do you hope readers and listeners will take away from your work? Now say that last question again. What will take? I said, I, what do you hope readers would take away from your work? Your readers. So people that read your Oh, book. right. Well, like I said, part of what I want, part of, part of me is enthusiasm. I mean, I want people to not just read about it. Right. Experience it. Uh, you know, when you're working with a kid, sometimes you say, "Well, you just give it a try." Well, in in some in some you know, with with Christianity uh, seeming to be in a low spot, you've got you got families that just need to give it a try. You know, if you if you're if you're failing in your belief, don't give up. Uh, I mean, the simplest thing that I know to tell people is, uh, if you if you're confused about life. Yeah. Just say this little prayer, God, I'm giving myself to you. And uh, during Lent, uh, this was a uh, this was a theme in one of the, the Lenten programs that I listened to, and uh, and the tag after that was, take care of everything, <laughs> God, I'm giving my life to you. Yeah, take care of everything. Of everything. Wow. Wow. That's a very great commitment. That is a great commitment. I wish a lot of people would believe and have trust in God that He can take care of everything. Thank you. Well, so see, see how simple that is. But yeah. the, the complexity begins whenever you say God take care of everything and He leads you down a path that you don't want that you don't want to go on or you don't think is right. And that's when you hit that roadblock and you think. Why? My life's been going so well the last few days. Why all of a sudden is nothing working? And, you know, that's when you have to stop and you say that little prayer again and you start uh, uh, seeing, you know, you start seeing seeing life in a little bit different way. That's the hard part. The, the commitment is simple. Uh, and if you'll do that, uh, and stay with that program and not get bogged down. But you know, the minute I start to get frustrated, yeah. that's when I say that prayer because I know that I'm not on the right track and I need to say, stop and back up. God, I need your help. Mm -hmm. Guide me in the right direction and let me leave this thing that's driving me insane behind. And, uh, and sometimes that adjustment takes a few minutes. Sometimes it takes a few days. Uh, you know, and it may be a, a a life commitment, but it all can start out very simply. And uh, that's why I say whenever you're whenever you're trying to put together a curriculum for young people, you gotta you gotta tell them about right and wrong. You gotta tell them about good and bad. You gotta tell them about bad, you know, evil and good. But you gotta they have to understand about sin and and they have to understand about confession reconciliation and, and you know we all make mistakes but that doesn't mean that god doesn't love us and that doesn't mean that he's not going to help us get out of this situation yeah. but you know it's all on us we've got to say i need help help me thank you so much for that those are words of wisdom to be honest thank you thank you do you have any advice that you like to offer to individuals seeking to align their talents their passions with their fate especially in challenging and uncertain times well if you you know if you have like i said i'm big on enthusiasm uh, and i'm big on getting excited and and if you know 
when you when you feel these talents, you feel these needs to, to work, mm-hmm. and, you know, ask God to help you, and he will. And uh, we're back to the, just give it a try. And sit back and watch him give you something to be excited about. Because once enthusiasm catches, once you catch on fire, it's never the same again. And, you know, uh, and and uh, going back to when I started my teaching career and you were working with 11 and 12 year olds yeah, and 13 and 14 year olds. Uh, it, if you can start to get them excited back then, before they have all these go through uh, adolescence and they have all these decisions coming at them. Uh, uh, you're going to be, you, you know, you're going to, you're going to be way, way better off. Uh, I remember seeing kids uh, that I had in sixth grade and I talked to their parents at graduation and they said, you know, you were right. You told us that things would, that, that our darling children that we worked so hard to raise as a Christian family mm-hmm. would go through times during high school yeah. But once they reached the end of the line, they were those kids that we taught mm. at home. And uh, and I like to tell people when they send their kids away to college, um, and that's that's one of the pitches I'm making at church. If we have a good Christian education program in church, that may be the only place these kids are gonna are gonna learn it, uh, and and then they can put it in, into you know for them. As far as my kids, my grandkids, I'm I'm happy to say that they've all had a good Christian education, and you always pray for them. But you 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 feel good about sending them off in the world if you know they've got that good solid background. Uh, it always gets it always gets to me at graduation time when you see parents weeping because their kids and they just are afraid for them and they they just don't know. Well, you know, that's why I want to remind them of that when the kid's three years old or five years old or nine years old or 13 years old. Sure. Train them. Teach your children well, as the old song goes. Because if you do, when that time comes, yes, if they move out of your house and leave you, and, and you're going to be you're going to miss them, but you're going to love them and you're not going to be worried sick about them because you're going to know. They've been raised to make those right decisions. And, you know, they're going to come in and they're going to say, God, I give my life to you. Uh, but if things are going wrong, they may have to back up and say that prayer three or four more times. <laughs> but they will because they know that when things aren't going right, it, they can, they know, God can help you fix them, but you've got to do it in a Christian way. Thank you so much. And that's a very good advice that teach your kids well. I mean, that's one of the greatest advice because the Bible tells us teach your children well. So teach your children well. Thank you so much for joining us today. We really appreciate you coming on our program, sharing your insights um, and giving us from some very powerful advice. <laughs> Thank you, <laughs> Kelvin, for joining us today. Thank you so much for having me. I enjoyed every bit of it. Thank you. And until next time, it's Shola and Calvin. And don't forget to subscribe. Bye. Thank you. Bye. (laughs) Goodbye. Subscribe if you haven't done so. Like, follow, comment. Until next time. Goodbye.